I guess the first thing that comes to mind when I when I think about the album uh, and its beginning is probably, you know, last summer, you know, everyone went back to school and I was just kind of on my own again, I was like by myself. I, it was almost like I had no choice but to start writing more music. And I think that's where a lot of the, um, a lot of my inspiration for the album came from because I wrote a lot of these, you know, bits and pieces of lyrics that showed up on the album that you know, kind of expressed my longing or wanting to not be alone. I was, I was just so much in my own world that I was kind of, I was just lost in it. And that got depressing, but that's true. <laughs> <laughs> So we usually take our first steps planning with pretty much showing each other the song ideas we have and um, if we can throw them off each other and get some feedback or if there is something that really sticks out to one of us, we can really run with that. I think those little little sparks at the beginning, that those little jolts of energy is, is usually where a lot of the passion comes from at the beginning. And then go with the slower part here. Mm -hmm. Do some more mumbling, and then the end. Just... One of the first things I remember about the album was like just being sent like constant music files of, "Hey, what do you think we should do with this?" And they kept sending me stuff over time. It's good to have a plan. Like, if we if we were just like, okay, let's write these songs. That's that's how it was with the uh, with the first one when we we were just like, we're like all right, yeah, let's write these ideas. songs, and then once they're done, we'll put them on the album, and then that was it. And then that was it. So now now that we are kind of like ahead of ourselves with ideas and different things, we can kind of sit back and just be like, all right, so this is what we need to do first now that we actually have all of us in on it. Oh! These early, these early sessions are, are really what get the blood pumping. Yeah, what's the date? Tell us. It me. is uh, what December are we... 28th, 2017 at 9.35 a.m. So this time around, we decided to kind of get all of our ideas in one spot. We were feeling kind of scrambled and we needed to kind of sit down and throw all our ideas on the table. And I want to write down the pretty much like eagerness to to finish Hold on. Okay. or like the ones that you think are like really good and like wanting like them one. done. Okay. So we can start working on them in like priority order. Visually, while we were writing, it was awesome to have because um, if we didn't have some sort of direction while writing, it was definitely going to get a little jumbled like it did for the last album. So we had a little bit of a path that we created for ourselves from the very beginning that we followed all the way through. Yeah, here's prop. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah. 
so when each song comes around, we don't always have a name for it, and so we'll just kind of put a code name in. Um, I know Sleeping Dogs was prop, um, but a lot of these songs don't have names to begin with. The code names are super helpful because if we're just kind of like, hey, do you know, you know, this one that we want to work on, the one that kind of goes, blah, blah, blah. if we have a name, it's just a working title. It's very shitty MIDI file. I was going to say, it's all... Okay, yeah. That one's got a lot of potential with not- That one's cool. Itch the Stitch and Chemical Forest seem like the ones that we should start with. Yeah. Definitely if they're in the top three for us, that those should be the ones that we start. And then like top five, and then top ten if we agree on them. <laughs> You realize you're back to square one when you're starting on a new album because you need new ideas and you need, you know, new songs. And while that's part of the journey of writing the album, it's definitely the hardest part to get going. One of the first writing sessions I can remember, I was showing Danny something I had wrote called Itch the Stitch. And if there's a light to be shown, I like it to be in the center of my life. I like that. Cool. That was probably one of our earliest creations that was more of a solid foundation. Boy, think of that. You know, that song really came into its own, and that was one of the first ones that we played live, you know, from the new album. It's February 3rd. 3rd at 9.45 p.m. So getting used to writing and recording from... Uh, miles and miles away was definitely a transition. I was off to college again, which made things a lot more difficult. Thank God for Google Drive and, you know, the notes section of the iPhone because they really just saved our lives <laughs> during this recording process. Oh, yeah, that yeah, just the more than you know. I got a feeling I'm running on empty. What is this song about? I think the first verse was, like, I think just the general theme is anxiety. <laughs> God, yeah, that works. <laughs> we had all these ideas, and now we had to go back to writing and trying to communicate long distance. We make it work, but it definitely slows down our process. Would it, uh, let me see if it would be like, That's as running on empty. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you know what this O apart is? I have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave him here for now and let him feel like a part there. of something. Do it like that. Let's do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Fills the sound more. Yeah. Feel that sound. Feel that sound. I right, well, welcome, welcome to practice before our show. <laughs> so I had a friend named Mosey who I met through my acapella group at school, and he approached me about having destroy the moon play at a house party he was hosting. <laughs> It was cool to know that we were going to go to a new place like Penn State and play up there. I never played anywhere up there and I've never really played like a house party like that. I think we had one day I was able to be home before the gig. We had a couple new songs from our up and coming album that we were thinking about playing. We had like Sleeping Dogs, uh, It's a Stitch, and Chemical Forest.
I think it was a really fun experience and it really came at a perfect time for the album, I think, because it gave us a chance to try and experiment with these new songs in a live environment while also trying to see if we had any inspiration from doing these songs live and if we could adapt them into new ways that maybe we were looking at from a more blank page when we're just trying to write them down on paper. All right, man. Well, how are we looking? Looks, um, looks pretty good. Just got a yeah. Just got a. Uh. <laughs> we decided to go with a new method of recording guitars this time around. We decided to go ahead and actually put the amp in the closet, so there was no outside noise, um, so we could get the cleanest and brightest sound we could. We're gonna want to put a mic in front of that and close the door. With the first album, we did everything right through the computer, but this time we mic'd everything up and uh, everything was, you know, real time and... I really need to like go through things like... like things that I can throw out like this piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this just in there? I don't know. <laughs> My diploma from high school. <laughs> That's how I think this album differs from the first one and it kind of has a, a different, more real sound to it. So... Uh, I'm about to go off to spring break, so I'm home for a day. Um, and I'm here, still. We just did a gig. Um, we're just getting back into recording, and we're trying some new stuff out. We're just testing it out with, um, Summerfield. Over spring break, we really sat down and worked on, I think one of my favorite songs in the album is the last song called Summerfield. There's so much heart in it, and there's so much feeling in the song, and it just wraps up the album so nicely. I'll start you again. I just want to get through a one <laughs> first. Okay. It's an amazing song that really does wrap up the album really nice, and um, it was really cool um, recording that song and, and, you know, all of the, all the ideas that we had for it. That's, that sounds really good. That sounds, that sounds so good. Dude, bitch. We found it, guys. This, dude, this new album, I don't think you understand. I think you understand. I don't think you understand. This new album. <laughs> I know AJ's really happy with the way it came out, but I'm really, really happy with the way it came out. All right, so, let's just do it here. Let's just decide now. That's all we're gonna do. We should do one of the three that we performed. Sleeping Dogs. I was going to say Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> Alright, here we go. <laughs> Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> and it was really interesting seeing the way Sleeping Dogs progressed because it was kind of our, like, little experiment for a large majority of the beginning of the album. It was the song we were using to try and figure out different and new recording processes. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Sleeping Dogs really helped us like get solidified and like get on track. Like this is this is how we're gonna do the album. Now we just have to do it. So we recorded the beginning steps of Sleeping Dogs. When AJ first came to me with it, I was really impressed just with how upbeat and fun it was to play and you know it's really fun to listen to and I think that was the song that we got the strongest reaction from out of the new ones at the Mosey gig. We had a whole different track down for the guitars that we ended up having to re-record just because we weren't happy with them. We're never done with the song. Uh, I was gonna say, sorry, I just had to get the, I had to get the tone knob. Um, uh, you get two measures so I'll give you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> When we started 
you know, pulling that one together, it, it really, really came into its own, and um, I was really happy with the way it came out, and I'm really happy that it was the first single. So miking the drum kit was a very new process for us. Uh, we didn't have a real kit on the first album. We kind of decided that on Wayside we were going to actually use a real kit, use the real space and mic the drums. Danny and I were both really excited to have TJ on board for uh, all the way through the recording of Wayside. He kind of hopped in at the end of our first album and he didn't really get to to flourish a lot with that the live drums their actual drums added so much more to the music there's so much more depth and varying levels of sound and you know you can hear the bass so much more and the and the toms are so much more distinct and give so much it just has this oomph that like electronic drums often don't have so it was a complicated mess of wires but it added so much in the end it was totally worth it <laughs> you know, all of us have our own sound that we bring to the band. And, you know, once we finally got TJ on board and he started playing with us and started writing with us, that made a world of a difference on uh, Wayside. That was good. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> I'm just going to have you try and play through Sleeping Dogs. Do I come in right at the beginning of that? Yeah. When I first like got into playing the songs like you know Sleeping Dogs and Apocalypse and all that, it was first it was like a reality like oh we're finally like this is like the push these songs will be done soon like this is the drums were what was needed and a few other tweaks here and there and like final mixing but like the parts were all gonna be there after this. I was a little nervous the first day we were recording drums just because it was something we hadn't really delve into before. We had a day before that where we were just testing a lot of stuff. I was gonna say like. I do the do the chugs for the like the first three, and then at the um, but I seem impatient part. Just stop. That's the second course. Like it's the second the, it's time, the right? second right. verse. Yeah, yeah, it's the second verse. Second. second time. Yeah. Usually with guitar, you do one track at a time. You can layer them after. But with drums, it's a lot more complicated just because you have like what five to ten mics going, and they all have to be at the right volumes because you can't go back and change them later i'm just trying to like balance it oh, yeah. because like i don't want the snare and bass to peak of course yeah. so i turn them down but then i have to turn everything else down to, to balance those out but i think overall it really came through and we got some really nice recordings out of it to mic up the drums and finally get to play and make this full-length album was really cool and just you know no songs are really the same at all you know, in, in terms of drums anyway too, so it was, it was nice to just keep banging out these like unique kind of sounding uh, songs. Because you have that on the bass going, yeah. it'll be like... Mm -hmm. The bass would be going through this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. The real work really starts in May when AJ comes back from school because there's a lot of preliminary work to be done while he's away, but once he comes back, there's really nothing else to do but to keep working and to keep recording and writing. When he initially came back from school is is when we got, you know, end times. That's that's a weird joke. You gotta find like the right notes. Like, yeah. And uh, what are we gonna do was written around that time. What are we gonna do? We finished up Apocalypse, we kind of tweaked it a little bit, it was a little different. And it would be like... Hmm. 
can you make up your mind? <laughs> also at the beginning of summer, we were starting to work a lot more on songs like I Don't Trust the Weather. And that one was really exciting for us because we had a lot of new sounds coming from that song. Yeah, something like that. I Don't Trust the Weather is like my favorite. When the drums sync up with the guitar and the solo and then goes back into the final breakdown, it all just like melded so well that I, you know, I love it still. <laughs> the solo in I Don't Trust the Weather is a really interesting one because it wasn't an idea that either of us had. It was literally just AJ making noises that we ended up really liking. Um, it was complete improv in the moment while we were listening to the lyrics um, along with the guitar and what came out of AJ's mouth became the solo and I have no idea where it came from and I don't think he'll ever be able to do it again. But I love what he got and I love what we did with that solo. We were starting to develop the style that the graphics would be for the album and that gave us the idea to do a lyric video for one of our songs. And of course the outlier at the beginning of our, our writing process was Sleeping Dogs. Basically what we did was we took green poster board paper and then um, painted the words on there. This better be good. <laughs> we did it. Hey! We did a lot today. Oh my god, this is so much. <laughs> Dude, it's everywhere. Okay, so we were here, we were at this. One of the oldest ideas that comes from this album is the beginning of Wonderful Madness. The bass line originated at least like two years ago. I was just playing around on uh, actually like a bass uh, keyboard when we were writing Wayside, Danny brought up that he had added a guitar line. So uh, one variation is like da 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 but sometimes I do da 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 it's a little bit more um a couple more syllables so if we want to try that one like da 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 delay departure okay we might be able to get something a little bit easier. Um all right chorus boy <clears throat> this is what you be singing. Yeah. I never want. I never want you to know that I'm the only one. I like that. Okay. Write, write that. I mean, uh, changing that, the whole rest does work. Uh, yeah, the rest of it works a little bit more. Are we good with this chorus? Like, I'm good with the chorus. Okay. Uh, where, where are we verse 2? It's supposed to be like a, a momentary time you're with this person before you leave kind of thing. After a while we started writing more of it and we realized that this song was going to be like kind of unique. It had some really quiet parts and then it went really loud. It felt like it felt like this song wouldn't have been done justice if one person sang it just because it was so complex. We then had the idea to have a girl come on the album and help us sing it. I also remembered I'm going to Arts Fest this week. Oh, sweet. So there's going to be a lot more people there I could potentially get to sing. Like, like ask, yeah. That weekend. That do it. would be awesome, actually. Um, but dun, dun, dun. And I think um, I'm going to swap it. So like guy sings first, girl sings second part of the verse. 
For verse one, verse two, I want the girl, the girl to sing first. first. Okay. The voices in the verse are like the um, the ones that are like the oh I'm gonna be sad and shit like mm -hmm. oh no, and then the voice in the chorus is like I'm just gonna let things happen. And I don't know what the bridge is gonna be, but I wanted to have sick three part harmony with all three voices. And it was a really interesting process to be able to get our third singer. We had the idea to ask uh, another friend of mine from my acapella group, Jordan, to come and sing on the album. Your ghost is driving me crazy, wonderful madness, built up a sadness. <laughs> the issue was she was up at Penn State and we were obviously over here. But I had a weekend coming up for their arts festival that I was going to be traveling up there. And we had the idea, why don't we ask her to come and record it there? The only issue is we need to get the song done and ready in time for her to record. The main melody should just do the stay, stay, stay the bottom there. All right, well, we are ready for fucking recording. I never want you to know that I'm the only one who seems to understand. It can't be. We got one of his insanely talented friends, Jordan Schwartz, to come and do vocals on that song. It's only for a little while, waiting here to see you smile. Yeah, yeah. Nice. A lot of people say that it's their favorite song on the album, and uh, I don't blame them because that song kicks ass. Oh, saucy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. I also love the the metaphors we have in it because I wrote the song a lot about long distance. I think it was very interesting that the song ended up requiring a bunch of travel to get done, and it really wraps the message of the song all together. Attached to last along the way, hopeless dreamt of I think that's good, like, are you, are you happy with all that? Because I think that sounds pretty good. Yeah, man, that sounds great. Around three quarters of the way through the album's process, AJ and I kind of came together, and I think around this time we started getting serious about um, End of Times and what became Analytical Nightmare. Uh, the Optimist. That was kind of the, the turning point where we were kind of, we knew we were starting to round third and we were heading home. These are basically done. Up till five. Up till five. Uh, is six is almost there. Yeah, six is pretty much done. But um, uh, definitely eight through one are definites and just we're getting through the process of them. We're at 11 right now. Turn. Turn is getting there. Um, I don't know what that'll be called, but at some point. Tear is a drop D song. Uh, the one with like the runny beginning guitar. And Drop Dead is just a nine minute improv right now. So we're gonna have to dissect that one, but. While we were listing all of the songs we had left to, uh, to complete, there was Something I just felt was missing. I there was a sounds that we had from the first album that I really liked, but I didn't think it was really being represented. And that's where the hero next to me came from. I, to be completely honest, don't know when we started recording that song. Like from the beginning of the recording process, I had never heard that song, and all of a sudden we were recording it. It was just, it didn't exist for the longest time, and then all of a sudden the hero next to me was on the album. Whoa! <laughs> that was 
so cool! <laughs> it's one of the more fun songs on the album. It's one of those songs that you can kind of jam to. So, yeah, I mean, it was a pleasant surprise. These songs were finally coming together. I finally started hearing like full versions, and I'm, you know, it was it was amazing to see like, oh, these are done. Like these are the songs that are going to come out. It was so cool to finally start seeing all this stuff, you know, come together, fall in place. You know, it's 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 always an incredible feeling on album, but especially with this one, like it's, it it takes a while to realize that like, oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> So I sent you some album covers so you can use my phone. So I had been kind of taking the mantle on the album cover. This on something like that or like just like a long like brick wall or something. I tried it with a couple different just like kind of stock photos to try and get an idea of what we want. Um, but we can probably take a day at some point just drive around and try and find some nice places and just shoot and see what we can come up with. We decided to go around and take pictures around town to kind of see if any of the pictures that we took had any potential to be an album cover. And we did get one that we really loved. It was an alley that, um, that we just happened to go down. Yeah. Do your job. That's actually kind of nice. It's not. Not nice? I mean, the stairs adds texture and oh. shit. Let's try a couple pictures here, and then we'll move over to the other one. So we, we went out yesterday, and we took some photos. Okay. And these are the seven that we liked. And we're trying some um, different texts. Oh, ideas. okay. We mm -hmm. like the simplistic right now. Yeah, Got for it. sure. Um, There's another one that we kind of skimmed over. The yeah. churchy. No, that was the, that was the third one. The number two is the oh, number two oh, is this one. Okay. Skin by this one. So yeah, this one. Ooh. That one's this my one, favorite. I'm back and forth. This is Westchester. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. back and forth about it. Well, we'd have the the title of the album as like the other. Line as it of was. It. Yeah. There were a bunch of different you know pictures we went through. A lot of them that got scrapped and eventually came down to that alleyway that just kind of fit and frame perfectly and it you know fit the title and. This one's my favorite, I think, because we I like the idea of. Um, Doing like spray paint or something, having it it like at, on the mirror. On the, okay. And those just keeping destroy the moon in the top at the yeah. top here. Okay. But I thought it was missing a little bit of something, and I had the idea to have the sky be colors. I wanted color in the sky, and I didn't know how to get there. Eventually, actually I actually had help from my sister. We started to do this drip paint technique. It's pretty much a mixture of acrylic paint and like Elmer's glue. do what the fuck? So you're mixing them all together? Well, you like layer them. So yeah, it, do like... it'll be like, like whichever one you want in the middle, I'll put in first. And then like, we'll layer it out. You mix it around, you do it in layers. If you want like red and then you want green and then you want blue. Put it in a cup and you flip it over and it makes this really cool, like almost like galaxy effects with the paint. And we ended up doing a bunch of them. We had a bunch of different ideas for all the different kinds of kinds of backgrounds we could have on the cover. Oh, yeah, yeah that's kind of the effect I was going for. Like, before. see, because the like the glue makes it bubbly. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to move it around? A little bit. Yeah. I think the final product is really cool, and it turned uh, the album cover into something really special. I think it was almost gloomy yet like eye-catching with the drip paint background and. Um, all the other elements, I think we got the best one that we could. Did we think over stuff? I the, the album, title, the uh, album titles. As we were reaching probably three quarters of the way through the album, I think we were getting a little eager with trying to figure out the title. When trying to figure out the name of the album, we eventually found a line in "I Don't Trust the Weather." 
that says I'll have to drop by the wayside. I think way, the wayside's my number one. I like, yeah, I like the wayside and endless momentum. <laughs> I do like just wayside. Uh, yeah. That works. I, I do like I, that. I do like that too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it. Yeah? I like it. I approve. Give the thumbs up. That's not condescending. I'm just being a dork. I like it. <laughs> Our album is called Wayside. It's Wayside. Get hype. We're not hype. <laughs> <laughs> This is, we're at the final writing session for album two. Yeah. It's weird. Hey. Hey, how's it going? The last writing day for music, AJ and I focused on Analytical Nightmare. We started to clean up the vocals uh, and the lyrics and then push two songs together that we initially had um, where we took one song that was the analytical part that I always kind of thought was the analytical part and then push it together with the nightmare part. The, the name is super fitting for that song and uh, it's one of the coolest, uh, hardest songs on the album and uh, I couldn't be happier with it. Okay, then, That's so sick! <laughs> and, and then what? So over four measures it drops to about 20 whatever's 20 whatever 20 tempos gotcha okay slower beats per minute the bass <laughs> that was the word i forgot what the word was tempos it drops 20 tempos <laughs> we have one line left and then we have to figure out the the how the end is gonna we'll work. The drop D boy. I think it took the song to finally take shape fully instrumentally for us to see the bigger picture of what these lyrics should be. It's an interesting process that I don't see happen very often. I think we either write the lyrics first in a song or like maybe they come a little bit later, but they're usually in there early on. <laughs> I love looking back and seeing the progression we had with this album because I think with every album there's new things to learn and new things to get better at. And we learned so much from our first album that all of the stuff that we wanted to implement in our second album comes through in such an inspiring way and I think it really shows how far we've come. All right, all right, one more take hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Analytical Nightmare, those fills in the beginning on drums took a ton of tries and um, especially the, the take that finally got used, those 16th note fills that go around the entire drum for like a you know, full measure there. Those That took like eight times to nail and get it like perfectly sounding. That just was really hard to do for me. When TJ came in for the last day of recording drums, I was finishing up the lyrics for Analytical Nightmare. Oh. You have an appointment? No. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> that was kind of my realization where we were basically done like everything's like for the most part done it's all these small little things you have to go do here and here it's like oh, i just want to release it but no you got to make sure everything's you know perfect it's a kind of perfection perfectionist mentality you have to have at the end that kind of gets annoying no oh. Those are the drums, everybody. We're we done. Did we did it. We did the drums. Yay! Except for those other little things. We're done. <laughs> what? Except for the little bass song and whatnot. And the. Uh... Besides that, we're we're in. The drums are done. The drums are done though. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the drums were all done for the all the songs, and all that was left to do was 
uh, vocals and some guitar. It's alone. Hey guys! Hey, welcome. Forgot you were here. How's everyone's night? It's ten oh one. Oh my god, no, it's ten o'clock. <laughs> Ten exactly. And palm mutes. We're on the last. We're on the last week. I'm. Oh, it's been a long. I know. It's been a long summer, man. So we had reached the last week. I was home for the summer, and the album was really coming together. Long ass beginning, dude. Long ass beginning. I want to hear my bass. The last thing that we ended up doing for the album was we recorded vocals for What Are We Gonna Do? What are we gonna do when they let you down again? When they destroy the hearts of the crowd? When they break you down and drive you underground again? And it was it was really chill and it was it was really cool but once we got done that it was really rewarding to know that the album was done the price of life, love and happiness. to hear everything from beginning to end was really surreal but really the coolest experience because everything was done and not only did we capitalize on our first album, which we had never done, we did a second album, so we were really proud of that too. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? All recordings for the album! Are done! Man, we cut it close, dude. Yeah, we did. I'm, uh, I'm leaving for school in like four days. Yeah. We have a gig on Saturday. We have a gig on Saturday. We have a gig in how many days? Three days? Yeah. Oh, God. I think it was just so perfect that as soon as we finished this album and we were getting ready to wrap things up and I had to go back to school, we had one final gig that we got to just blow people away with all of our new songs. Even if it wasn't a album release for us, it was kind of an album release because we were debuting a lot of new music, but um, we were just thankful that we got to have that opportunity. It really always seems to come down to the wire like that for some reason, but our gig was the last night I was home. And it felt like we were finishing everything in like just the nick of time, but it also felt like everything was just falling into place exactly how it should have been. Once we were recording those those last songs, it was it, it did finally hit me that like, oh this is gonna be it. And we, we were counting down the songs, it's like okay, one more to get like two more to go, one more to go. One more take, two more takes, and then we're done with the entire album. These songs are done, and that was incredible. And it was like so like relieving when you finally, when I was able to finally put down like my drumsticks and be like, okay, done, like moving on. <laughs> this album just felt so much more collaborative. It really blossomed because of that, where we all had little tweaks and little ideas that we wanted to throw in. It's really exciting just to just to know that like you didn't do this on your own. You had two people helping you. You had all of these ideas coming from 
from different minds that finally get to be pieced together and that's what made this album unique while we're all together it's it is really just kind of bouncing ideas off of each other and and you know bouncing jokes and and stories off of each other and it's really cool to just just hang out with the two of those guys because i mean those are the two guys that i have the most fun with i mean i can do what i love and they're doing what they love i hope everyone enjoys the album has been enjoying it you know of course we're always in the process somewhat of writing new stuff no matter how off how far off something another album another thing is but keep making music so hopefully everyone keeps enjoying it <laughs> You know, Destroy the Moon is a uh, is an amazing project, and I'm I'm so thankful that I get to work on it every day and and continue to write and play with um, two of my best friends. So um, you know, everyone has a happy ending, and uh, Wayside definitely had a happy ending. Touch grass outside summer fields again. Lessons to bones, lessons I've told back then. What's up? You down? Hey, I'm recording right now. Can I call you back? Okay. Whoa. I think it's really rewarding when we. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really rewarding when we. Uh. The real work begins in May, um, because when AJ starts coming back from school, he starts coming back. Like his body parts each come back at different times. But once he's all back, then this we start working. Thumb. Get him working <laughs> his on first summer field. <laughs> Thank you.